Hello and welcome to a step-by-step -step guide of how I basically built this van. So I've uploaded this timelapse before but I thought it'd be cool to do a little um, voice recording slash commentary and basically just explain all of the steps that I went through to build the van because I get a lot of questions on kind of where to start, what the process is and um, so yeah, I thought it'd be easy to just kind of walk you through what I'm doing. So as you can see, I started by cleaning out the van and taking out any kind of plywood that was already in there. Um, it was pretty dirty, so it took me a while to kind of sweep it. I swept it probably like five times, um, cleaned it up, and then there was a few rust patches. So I kind of just uh, filed those away, painted over it. So hopefully that kind of slows down the any more kind of rust building up on the floor. Um, after that, I then did the sound deadening and the insulation. This is a very tedious task, but um, it's, it's not complicated, it's just very tedious and takes a while. The sound deadening, um, you don't have to stick it everywhere, you just kind of, it's just to stop the panels from being so rattly and um, it kind of prevents some noise when you're driving, so yeah. And the insulation, I used this kind of sticky um, foam, so it's like a layer of foam, one side is shiny, um, the other side is sticky, so it kind of just sticks to the van. Um, and the idea is that it then reflects the heat back into the van or if it's hot outside it will be reflected outside. Um, I then, as you can see here, I then used some kind of fluffy recycled plastic insulation in some of the larger cavities. Um, so there was multiple layers of insulation around the van. I added some battens onto the floor just so I could support the wood of the flooring a little bit more but I do regret not adding more so if you're doing it this way definitely add more than I did here um, because my floor ended up being a little bit bouncy which was not very good. Um, I did this before I did the floor insulation so then I could just insulate over it because um, this van was a mid roof so I wanted to keep as much height as possible um, so that I could still stand up straight. Uh, so that's why I didn't want to make the floor too thick so that's why I still use this insulation but I just did it in between the battens and yeah that saved a lot of the um, height really so the floor was still pretty thin. Um, I'm trying to do this all in one take by the way so apologies if I kind of don't line up with what's happening um, but yeah then I did the solar panels um, I decided to mount them onto the roof racks because I kind of wanted to avoid putting holes in the roof of the van. This van already had some, I think it must have had previous roof racks or something installed so there was already some like old bolts in the roof so I really wanted to avoid um, avoid putting any more holes in. Um, so I just attached the roof rack, the uh, solar panel sorry, to some brackets and then put the roof racks on the roof. Time for the flooring. Um, I decided to go with laminate flooring. Um, I was going to do a lino and then I just kept reading about how um, easy it was to scratch. So I decided to use this laminate flooring. It was really thin um, but very tedious to click it all together. It took forever. Um, but I really love how like it's really durable um, and yeah, makes it look a bit more homely, I think. So Oh, apologies the chair is squeaking uh, makes it look a lot more homey I believe so yeah took a while as you can see and um, what was next yeah I'm trying to do this all in one take I thought that'd be easier so ah okay now we're on to the ceiling so I decided to do a stripped ceiling um, so as you can see I'm kind of doing all of the parts of the outside of the van first, so like framing it, doing the floor, the walls and all of that. So ceiling, I decided to use this strip method, so I just got these planks of wood um, and then I stained them both sides, uh, which you can't really tell, the stain was not the kind of the colour I was going for, but I ended up sticking with it in the end. I uh, just painted stain a couple layers on that. It also will help protect the wood for like condensation and things like that. Um, I then carpeted the roof, uh, I'm not sure if I filmed any of that, but I used a four-way stretch which is used in vans a lot. I carpeted the roof, um, as you can see here it's all completely black, so 
I just needed something to look black so I thought carpet would be the easiest one. And then I started the very long process of screwing the, uh, these strips into the ceiling. I had to measure kind of where I wanted the join and how long I needed each batten to be. Um, but it actually went a lot smoother than I thought. Um, it took a while, obviously I was trying to hold it up with my head um, to screw in one end and changing the drill from drill bit to screw bit and all of that was a right faff. But eventually, I mean, this part of the video is probably half of the video because it took so long. I also thought this was just a very satisfying time lapse, not gonna lie. Especially after it took me so long. As you can see there, that's where I decided to put the join because I'm screwing these battens into some wood that I've screwed into the metal. Um, so I'm, I created the line and the join at the back of the van there, meeting on one of the pieces of wood so that I could then screw the other pieces in as well. I hope that makes sense. And I hope this video is actually informative for people um, who want like a bit more in-depth of the process from step by step. I, do, I did film uh, longer videos on each section, but there are some bits that I kind of missed out um, because trying to film everything is so hard. Like when you're trying to do the build by yourself and film it, it takes so much longer when you want to film bits. Um, so that's why I thought this kind of talk through would be uh, a lot more helpful than some of those other videos because I tried to, the time lapse was easier so I tried with the time lapse to uh, literally time lapse pretty much every big part we're nearly there with the ceiling yeah this this took a while but so satisfying last piece in there we go okay after the ceiling I did the walls so it was taking me a while to decide what I wanted to do with the walls, but I decided to go with the easy option. Um, so I put in a few of these framing um, support bits, I don't know what you'd call them. Um, these were drilled directly into the van, uh, into the metal, so they're super secure, really strong. And then all of the other wood, which is cladding, um, as you can see here, was then screwed into those battens. So. Um, it's all really secure and if I was to do it again I probably would try and go with the more complicated way of trying to utilise a bit more of that space in the walls um, because this is where my bed is so having that extra couple of inches would have been really handy. Um, but I did leave out a few little bits at the top where I made some little shelves uh, which you'll see at the end but that that kind of worked I guess but the shelves are a little bit smaller than I kind of anticipated I feel like I'm saying this about most jobs but most jobs especially when you're by yourself are so like repetitive and tedious clearly why I didn't film the other wall anyway on to the kitchen so um, I decided to try and do things like as strong as possible so I basically did everything with pocket holes and with the kitchen I just thought what's going to make it strong, secure, so I've got the back pieces and then each individual divider which will be the different cupboards um, and yeah it's so strong, so secure, so much storage space, I definitely recommend if you're building, if you don't have any carpentry experience like me to go with this method of building, like it's really simple to kind of plan it out and to know what kind of method you need to use and what size to do it. So then we kind of put the worktop in, cut the worktop to size and then screwed it, everything. So that screwed all these dividers into the worktop. Um, I did also put some screws into the floor as well. That's mostly just to make sure things don't move too much. As you can see, I cut the hole for the sink as well. Um, and put the sink in, put the fridge in. This was just a case of kind of screwing them in and gluing them down. Uh, wasn't too complicated. Um, here I'm just kind of making some of the cupboard like door fronts, the drawers. Um, I wanted this little kind of rectangle effect. Um, you'll see in, I put like a rattan in the middle so yes. Yeah. Just making the frames for those. Uh, again with the pocket screws. Um, oh we're jumping around a bit here to different, different tasks. Okay onto the bed I used a kitchen, electric kitchen knife to cut the foam. Uh, cut it into pieces 
and yeah you can see that I've got like the two little sofa bits and then two bits that will be for the back of the sofa and it all folds out to double bed. Then it was onto the wardrobe, so again I used pocket screws and I just did things the simplest way. I don't know how to build a wardrobe, so I just thought the sides, shelves, done. It's like it's so easy when you if you like you just don't overcomplicate it. Like people make things so complicated for no reason. So yeah. And again with the bed, it was literally a box with a divider in the middle. Um, just have to make sure that the back part of the these kind of boxes weren't. Um, weren't the whole size because the wheel arches were there and there's the whole thing you can see it and it was basically the same for the other side I'm not sure if I filmed it but oh yeah here we go two side pieces end piece or width piece long piece I don't know what you call it and then the back piece which is what I secured it to the van with and that was most of the building done and once the building's done everything just flies by so started painting and you can see the little boxes there that I was talking about earlier um, with the paint it's pretty straightforward same as painting the house I suppose I decided to go with a bathroom paint because I thought it would be pretty resistant to mold it's also pretty good to just kind of wipe off if it gets dirty um, and for the kitchen I used a, uh, a lick brand paint because uh, it's again hard wearing, easy to wipe off and things like that. I wanted to do white walls because I just yeah wanted to open up the space a bit more and have it a bit brighter and with the kitchen I wanted to do a nice bright colour um, so it was more of like a statement so painted all of this white which took a while, I had to do a couple coats and then with the kitchen also took quite a while but I didn't have to paint inside the cupboard so it wasn't as much of a surface to cover. Yeah it's taken a while. I think it was also raining so we were stuck inside painting whilst it was raining. Still going with the, uh, the white paint. I do sometimes think white was maybe a bad choice because it gets dirty so quick but it just makes it so much brighter, like a van is a tiny space so the white is kind of necessary. So here you can see the kitchen colour, we went with this like kind of blue, eggshell, duck egg kind of colour, I don't know what you call it. Um, it was a lot lighter when we first started painting but it does dry a bit darker so that was nice. If anyone's got any questions more specifically about any process of the build, please uh, leave a comment and let me know because um, I, yeah, I love helping people out. I mean, I have no real experience apart from what I've done. Like, I'm not a, I'm not professional by any means, but um, I like to remind people to stop overcomplicating things. There you can see the little um, cupboard drawer fronts that I was building earlier just stuck some rattan on the back of them and then this one on the right is a false drawer so I just kind of screwed it into place. The one on the left I put on some hinges which opens, opens out towards you and then the middle one is a nice big drawer which has loads of cutlery and things like that in it. And the wardrobe doors are the same except I, I continued with the white on this side um, but yeah the rattan adds such a nice kind of colour and warmth to the place. And then it was time for all the little touches so I added the door handles so I just used a bit of tape to kind of make a marker for all of these and tried to get them as central as possible but at the end of the day all of these like cupboard doors are wonky so no one's going to really notice if it's like a centimetre off. Um, so yeah, once all the kind of cupboard doors were done, um, I also added a lot of like latches for the cupboards on the inside. So I've got a few magnetic latches. Um, I've got some that are um, kind of if you twist on the outside, it just stops the drawer from opening. Um, yeah, that's very important to get things to stop all the cupboard doors opening because they will just fly open. The amount of times I forget about them and everything's just flying everywhere. I also added this extra bit of counter on the side which I, to be honest, don't really use that much but it is nice when I've got the door open and I can add a little bit of extra space there.
just kind of screwed in the hinges and that was pretty easy just got to make sure it all lines up properly I also did the kind of plumbing and the tap and all the things like that I don't think I filmed that because it was such a simple process um, my tap is uh, that tap that you can see on the left and then there's literally a tube that goes from the bottom of that into the water tank um, and the pump is inside the tap so it's super simple and just recharges um, so I haven't really filmed that but I then added some like a little backsplash with these fake tiles they're just stickers um, but they actually turned out pretty cool so here it is all done there's a little open of all the cupboards shows you everything um, and the other end, here's how the sofa and the bed's made and yeah, it kind of goes from looking like an unfinished van to finished in like literally no time.